Welcome to the Man United stream. In today's show, we're going to be talking about the Jadon Sancho and Ten Hag feud that has taken another dramatic twist to the whole story. Also, in today's show, we're going to talk about this glazed out protest that took place in the USA by USA Man United fans out there against the Glazers. We'll talk about how they did it and why they did it and did it have any effect. Also, in today's show, we'll be looking ahead at the game against Crystal Palace in the EFL Cup at Old Trafford tonight. We'll see what United will be doing in that game and whether they'll be taking it seriously or not. Now, like always, before we kick off the show, please smash that like button on the video so it gets pushed out to many, many people out there. And if you're new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe so you can keep up to date with all the latest Manchester United news and opinion and just general football news. So hit that subscribe button. So let's kick off today's show with this whole feud between Jadon Sancho and Eric Ten Hag. What is going on between these two? Both are not backing down and both seem to be playing a game of chicken with each other. It's a matter of of who's going to apologise first. Is it going to be Eric Ten Hag or is it going to be Sancho? Jadon Sancho has been banned from all first team facilities at Manchester United, including the dining room. The move was actioned by Ten Hag, who does not want a disillusioned player spreading negativity and causing disharmony within his squad. Now, I think we said this a week ago in our show that Jadon Sancho will not be allowed around the team when Ten Hag feels that he's a negative influence on the players and he's not going to want him there. And I think that is the case. He doesn't want him in and around the first team because he doesn't want any of the other players to get influenced by his negative attitude towards playing for Manchester United. He doesn't want that. You wouldn't want that. Why would you? If you had a team and you're trying to get them to play well and focus on the game and be positive, why would you bring in someone like Jadon Sancho to ruin all of that? You can understand exactly why Ten Hag has taken these steps because if a player is not willing to apologise to you, does not respect you, does not want anything to do with you, why would you allow him in the club to sit there and listen to everything you're saying to the rest of the players? It would just be awkward. It would be like inviting your enemy to sit in there and say right okay sit here and listen to everything I've got to say you're just not going to have that it's negative vibes you don't want people around like that around your team so it's clear that none of these two are backing down Ten Hag is not going to apologise although Jadon Sancho feels that Ten Hag should be the one who should be apologising because he was the one post press conference in that Arsenal game that made those comments on Jadon Sancho not training hard enough and not doing well enough at training to be picked for the squad. Now, we're not sure whether these were accurate statements or not. We'll never know until someone comes out and tells us one or the other whether Jadon Sancho was actually training hard or whether he was slacking and turning up late to training. Either way, we don't know the story so far, but what we do know is that Ten Hag did make that statement against Jadon Sancho and Jadon Sancho hit back publicly but since that initial spat we heard that Ten Hag did have a meeting with Jadon Sancho sat him down and discussed everything through and then offered him a chance to come back into the team by apologizing Jadon Sancho refused to apologize to Ten Hag at that meeting and left the meeting now since then Ten Hag has taken the action to remove him away from the entire first team squad and he's actually now training with the youth team now, we've also had sources from within Manchester United confirm that Jadon Sancho has been approached by Richard Arnold and by other management within and around Manchester United to try and resolve the situation, but Jadon Sancho has not taken that opportunity up to go ahead and try and resolve the situation. It's clear to many at the club that Jadon Sancho wants out of Manchester United and wants to leave in January, and that's why he's refusing to apologise and will not apologise to Ten Hag. Now, there's two camps of people out there. Some some people who want Ten Hag to apologise to Jadon Sancho for making that initial statement against him and then there's others who want Jadon Sancho to apologise to Ten Hag because he's the manager and he's allowed to say what he needs to say about him not training well. Now lots of fans are obviously in support of Ten Hag and want Jadon Sancho to apologise but there are some fans who actually believe Jadon Sancho is the one who should be receiving the apology from Ten Hag and the reason why these fans feel that Ten Hag should be apologising to Sancho is because they feel that Ten Hag is the one who initially breached that confidentiality and made that statement to the press about Jadon Sancho not training well enough 
who should apologise and why? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Should it be Jaden Tanjo who should be going to Ten Hag and saying, I'm sorry for making that public statement against you? Or should it be Ten Hag who should be apologising to Sancho for him lifting the lid on how he's been training? Now, I've made my thoughts on this issue clear in previous shows, which is that Ten Hag is the ultimate hierarchy at the club. He is the boss. He is the gaffer. And you have to respect him. You can't come out and start making public statements against what the gaffer is saying. What Sancho ought to have done is gone to Ten Hag the next morning and discussed everything with him and told him directly that he was not happy with the statements that he's made about him not training well enough. The situation currently does not benefit either party. It doesn't benefit Ten Hag because he's missing a right winger, a right winger who could actually be offering a lot to Manchester United right now. And it's Jadon Sancho who's also missing out because he could be actually playing in that Manchester United team right now and could be offering a lot and could actually be fighting for for his position and keep Anthony out of the team once he does arrive back. So I think Sancho is missing a key opportunity here by not apologising and not playing for Manchester United. Who's right, who's wrong, you do not know. It's a really contentious issue and you can understand those people who are supporting Sancho and you can also understand those people who are supporting Ten Hag. It is a very difficult situation. Now, my thoughts on Sancho has always been that I really like Sancho as a player, really wanted him to do well. However, his actions to this situation have not been good. I mean, even currently, he just seems to be someone who just wants out of Manchester United and does not respect the manager, does not respect his teammates. And we've had reports in the last 24 hours that players like Rashford, like Maguire and like Luke Shaw have gone up to Jadon Sancho and asked him to apologise to Ten Hag and get the situation resolved but Sancho is refusing to apologise and does not want to do anything of the sort and wants to hold his ground. Well, all well and good, he can hold his ground but that means that he will be out of Manchester United by January and by the latest the summer transfer window. So moving on to the Glazers, now we've not talked about the Glazers for some time or the takeover or Sheikh Yassim or Sir Jim Ratcliffe on what's going on, any news or no news, but right now we are still getting protests and this one's an unusual one because we got a protest in the USA by a fan group out there, yes, we got the Manchester United fans from Pittsburgh and Tampa supporters groups fly a Glazer out banner above the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Stadium, which the Glazers own ahead of the Buccaneers NFL match against the Eagles. Now this protest is very very important and pivotal because the US fans out there do not know what's going on really with Manchester United and the Glazers. They're actually kind of happy with the Glazers owning Buccaneers and they've just won a Super Bowl recently in the history so they're actually happy. But now the protest has been taken all the way to the doorstep of the Glazers and I can see this happening more and more and the Glazers will be worried. They do not want this protest protest to go all the way to the US where the Buccaneers fans will hear about it and maybe they might start revolting against the Glazers too. So this is why the Glazers will want to contain this protest and try and resolve the situation all the way in Manchester rather than have it affect the Buccaneers Tampa Bay. So finally in today's show we can actually look forward to the game against Crystal Palace tonight in the EFL Cup at Old Trafford. So Manchester United will begin their defence of the Carabao Cup trophy against Crystal Palace at Old Trafford. Eric Ten Hag won the League Cup in his first season in charge thanks to a 2-0 win over Newcastle at Wembley in February and the Dutchman will be keen to start the new campaign in the cup competition with a home victory against Crystal Palace. Now we're not quite sure how serious Ten Hag is going to take the Carabao Cup this year. He did win it last year in his first season here. However, this time he has lots and lots of issues. He's got lots of injuries. He's got players unavailable to spread out and play in tonight's game. So what will he do? Will he field a half decent team out there? Or will Ten Hag put out a team of young players out there tonight? We'll see. It'll give us an indication of what he thinks thinks of this cup and how seriously he takes it. The team sheet tonight will give us a good indication of what Ten Hag feels about this cup and whether he wants to defend it or not. Now Crystal Palace's form is not much different to that of Manchester United. They've won two games, lost two games and drawn two games. They're one position below Manchester United in the Premier League table and their main talisman is Wilfred Zaha who is a danger man for them. We'll see if he plays tonight, more than likely he will be playing and he 
he will be the only one that Manchester United need to keep quiet and if they can do that there's a strong possibility that they can come out and win. We also are hearing reports that United will not be playing Onana in golf tonight and it will be Altai Bender the new Turkish goalkeeper that will be making his debut at Old Trafford and we're also hearing that Mason Mount and Sofian Amrabat could also feature in tonight's game giving them some much needed game time. Please let us know what you think about the EFL Carabao Cup. Do you think Manchester United should defend this and put out a very strong team and try and win it again this year or do you think Manchester United should focus more on the Premier League and the Champions League this year rather than the Carabao Cup? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think and if so what team should Manchester United be playing in this cup game? Let us know your thoughts. Please hit that like button on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. You were watching the Man United streamer channel by the fans for the fans.